Uh, Sir Ronald Saunders, a noted CARICOM diplomat, once mm -hmm. recently suggested something which I'm now about to ask. Yes. Based on the fact that we need foreign exchange and that agro-processing is seen as a path of getting back to how we're accustomed, Right. Uh, what about the decriminalization and the taxation of um, cannabis and using it as an export market to California, Canada, uh, Colorado, places where it is used for medical purposes. You don't throw me a curveball, boy. You make me sweat, man. Legalization of marijuana. You really feel that if you... Huh? You better believe it. But you feel if they legalize marijuana, that it will have that big profit value in it? Huh? It's not going to. If you, if you allow it to grow freely all around the place, and, 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 and they are so advanced now in the technology, they have uh, tens, of, tens of different varieties of marijuana. They have some marijuana you can smoke and don't get your way. They have marijuana with, that, they have, that they have genetically modified to put in to give a perfume scent. They have, they, they have so many different varieties now. I am afraid that even if it were to have um, extinct uh, uh, economic value to it, that we have so missed it. But we, we, we are so far behind in that technology that I don't know that we'll be able to catch up now. The Americans <laughs> are, very, are very clever at these things. So they've gone ahead and they've... I, I saw a documentary on National Geographic. I could not believe it. I, I know marijuana is, you know, marijuana, we know they've got a couple of varieties around. <laughs> but um, not that I trade in that type of stuff. Uh, but you hear the talk around the place, you read it in the paper. Uh, they even got well, beige and green, I think they got it. But, they, 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 so, 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 but I didn't know that, that this thing is now um, grown now in, 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 in greenhouses and, mm -hmm. and they have these hundreds of different varieties. and. I, 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 you know, I never, I never knew that until I saw the documentary. It was really eye opening. But that's that's not something that we. Uh, 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 think. What we have to do, Ian, is that we know what works for us, and we have to improve the quality of the products that we produce and the services. We he said one of the mistakes that he made in relation to the back was uh, giving too many waivers uh, and zero ratings to. In the sense that every time you do an adjustment in relation to zero rating or exempting from payment of any tax, it is a cost because as you uh, either collect it and give it back or you don't collect it back, then uh, it uh, present, present, presents a challenge. We believe that the, uh, that the current exemptions are adequate in relation to the basket of goods. There may be some adjustments that you could make in terms of taking out some items and replacing them with other items, particularly more health items, which would address the issue that Barbarians have with uh, health issues and chronic diseases. Uh, but in terms of a blanket expansion of that basket at this time, that is not, it's not bad faith. We're not negotiating in bad faith. Uh, it's really the timing when they delivered it, when we got it, the analysis that is being done. But the government has put its position on the table. We have announced it to the country uh, what our course of action is. Now, of course, nobody wants to, uh, you know, people seem to think that there is some rejoicing, that somebody has brought up party hats and noisemakers uh, and are rejoicing in the corridors of government headquarters because people have to go home. That is not true. This is a very painful decision for the government. It certainly is a very painful decision for me because there are probably members of my family working in the government, most likely, more likely than not, who may very well be among the 3,000 if it comes to pass. So it is not something that we are rejoicing about. And we held on to public sector jobs against much criticism, against much abuse in Barbados. And you know, I, 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 I smile when I hear people talking. You know one of the things that amazed me? Some of the people who are no crying crocodile tears for the people in the program were the hate people 
who were saying week in, week out that the first set of people you should send home is the people working in the NEAT program. Let me explain to you how the NEAT program came about. Because the Democratic Labour Party get blamed for a lot of this. The NEAT program did not start as any crash program for work, for people to find political jobs, as was said. That was a welfare to work program. We actually went into the welfare department. It was started on the Dennis Law, the Honorable Dennis Law, when he was Minister of Social Care. I became Minister of Social Care after. We selected the people off the welfare role with the intent of giving them a two or three day or four day in job in government to wean them off the, the public welfare system, to build their confidence, to give them an opportunity to participate in the mainstream of the economy. And we were slaughtered up and down Barbados for doing it. That is how that program started. It is unfortunate that the financial situation does not allow us, and we made it clear, in fact, for those who have been around long enough, and you stretch your memory, you will remember that a big meeting was held at the Lloyd Erskine Sandy First Center, where those workers were brought in, and they were addressed by the Prime Minister and the ministers connected MTW and uh, social care. And they were told why the program was being done. And it had an outstanding rate of success, where over the first period from 2008, I believe, to 2012, only one person dropped out. And that was because of illness. That is why that program was done. And we did that to, to, to give dignity to people in Barbados. So when people are talking about, and, and I made the point, I made the point that it was always known by the majority of those workers, if not all of them, that this was contract work. This is work that, that was not permanent, built into government, but it was a program to help people transition from welfare uh, to welfare to work. So when we were being slaughtered about, about this, as we were slaughtered, we have been slaughtered for a number of programs in this country, but people just do, do, simply do not understand. You see that? That program about bus fares for school children, there are a lot of people in Barbados who, even though you tell them, still pretend they don't understand. But that had nothing to do with any political gimmick. That had to do with saving a class of young people in this country who were under fundamental threat from forces out to do evil rather than good. I can't say it specifically because I am sworn to secrecy when I was a member as Minister of Foreign Affairs of the National Security Council. But I can tell you that if we did not intervene in that particular way, the public of Barbados would have seen some things in Barbados. People who know, know. But the vast majority of people don't know what was going on in bus stands in Barbados and how people's children are being ferried in and out of this country <clears throat> for prostitution and drugs. So when people talk about these programs, let me tell you something. They sit down and they'll willy-nilly thing and we do this to get votes. That is not how that program started, and it's not how the NEAT program started. And I'm saying a government that has a heart, of, made up of people who have heart, and who are interested in the development of their own country and development of the people in their country will take decisions to protect those people. Sometimes those decisions have, most times those decisions have costs. Yes, and sometimes we have to pay for it. Sometimes we have to make adjustments to bring them to end or to shift them or reformulate them, find ways in which we can take the burden off the state. But at the juncture where you are dealing with policy, at the juncture and you have to make those decisions, you make them because it is in the best interest of everybody in the country.